Hi, my name is Pastor Hal York, and welcome to Truth in the Trenches. Today we're going to be in Proverbs chapter 24, verse 17. What are you smiling about? Ever been asked that question? Usually it's asked in derision by someone who has experienced a setback or a calamity of some kind. But why, do we, why would we smile at something like that? Our verse explains why. It says, Do not rejoice when your enemy falls, and let not your heart be glad when he stumbles. It explains why we are smiling. Our enemy has fallen, has stumbled. And then it says what? Do not rejoice. Do not let your heart be glad. Wow. How can we do that? Well, before we ask, answer that question, let me ask you another, a question. Do you have enemies? Well, who are enemies? Well, the people who don't like us and they're not afraid to say so and make our lives hard and difficult. But sometimes our enemies can even appear to be our friends. You know, it's amazing how bad someone can treat us and slander us and gossip about us and yet still consider themselves to be our friends. Those are the enemies of the worst kind. For he's like one who was inwardly calculating, eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. He's setting you up for hurt and betrayal. Proverbs says, whoever hates disguises himself with his lips and harbors deceit in his heart. And when he speaks graciously, believe him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart. Our enemies are people who make our life hard. They're against us. Maybe they've hurt us or betrayed us. And what they've done keeps running through our minds, robbing us of sleep at night. I think we all get the picture. It's one we can all relate to, to some degree or another. And so when they stumble and fall, it would be pretty easy to rejoice and in our hearts to be glad. It looks good on them, right? But God says, don't rejoice. Don't be glad in your heart. It's hard not to smile or, or to smirk or give a little subtle fist pump that nobody can see. But we need to remember as a believer, our hearts are not to be fashioned after our fleshly impulses, but be empowered by the Spirit of God who indwells us. Well, some may be asking, or I'm sure they're thinking it, how can doing this be wrong if it feels so right? It feels right to be glad, doesn't it? It feels right to smile, to rejoice when your enemy falls. It feels right, but God says it's wrong. The writer doesn't describe what happens in detail, but they've, but they've fallen upon hard times, maybe financially or physically or relationally. Well, if we can't rejoice, what are we supposed to do? Can we just remain neutral? Well, it's amazing how many verses in the Bible talk about how we are to treat our enemies, and being neutral is not one of the ways it gives. Romans 12.20 says, To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. If you meet your enemy's ox or his donkey going astray, you shall bring it back to him. If you see the donkey of one who hates you lying down under its burden, you shall refrain from leaving, it with, leaving him with it. You shall rescue it with him. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. The bottom line is we are to treat our enemies like God treated his enemies, you and I. Romans 5 says, Christ died for the ungodly, that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5.10 says, for if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. Jesus said in Luke 6.35 and 36, but love your enemies and do good and lend expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and evil. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. Jesus wept over Jerusalem, their lostness, the rejection of him as their Messiah. He prayed for those who were driving the nails into his hands on the cross. Do not rejoice over your enemy who stumbles, or let your heart be glad when he falls in the way. What can we do? We can pray for them. We can help them. We can love them. We can be merciful, not giving them what they deserve. We can be gracious to give them what they don't deserve. And in doing so, we will be like our Father in heaven. 
This seems unnatural because it is. It's supernatural. It's Christ living through us. And remember what Paul said in Philippians. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Now there's a truth we can smile about. May God use this truth as we seek to live for his glory and the good of others in the trenches of life. May God bless.